Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. If you always watch our channel, you may know that Chinese chip and US ban. The chips of American companies are all over the world, and China is the world's largest chip consumer market. Therefore, most of the chips in the United States flow into China to bring products and services to domestic consumers. However, since the United States revised its chip rules, it has become more and more difficult for American companies to sell chips and chip prices have plummeted and they still cannot sell. What is the reason? What will be the result of the United States vigorously building cores? Nobody wants to buy American chips. It is not difficult to find that most chip companies in the United States develop sales business and make money by selling chips. For example, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, etc. sell their own chip products to the world, and it seems that only Apple's chips are for their own use. This has created a phenomenon that American chip companies are extremely dependent on the consumer market and need to earn huge sales in markets such as China. As long as the market remains open and cooperative, U.S. companies can maintain revenue and profits. As the world's largest chip consumer, China spends more than $300 billion on imported chips every year. U.S. companies are aiming at this huge market and have launched an in-depth layout. Most of the U.S. companies have decades of development history in China and have formed close cooperative relationships with Chinese manufacturers. As far as free trade is concerned, the cooperation between the two parties is a win-win result and an inevitable trend of globalization. However, the U.S. chip rules have broken the market balance and changed the cooperative relationship between U.S. companies and the market. According to the requirements of U.S. rules, specific chips need to be licensed before they can be shipped, and 5G chips cannot be provided to specific manufacturers. In short, under the U.S. chip rules, U.S. chips cannot be sold anymore. For example, NVIDIA's graphics card inventory is piling up, Qualcomm's mobile phone chip shipments in the first half of this year have decreased by more than 6 million units year-on-year, year, and Texas Instruments chip prices have dropped from 90 yuan to 10 yuan, but sales are still worrying. These are just normal signs that U.S. companies' chips cannot be sold. More phenomena show that U.S. companies are reducing capital expenditures, reducing costs through large-scale layoffs, and coping with the coming technological winter. If U.S. companies can achieve large-scale chip sales, they will be able to recover blood quickly. But in reality, U.S. companies may not be able to achieve a surge in sales in a short period of time, because U.S. rules restrict the shipments of U.S. companies. In order to avoid the rules, NVIDIA specially launched the A800 chip to replace the A100 in the rules. As for the sales effect, it has yet to be tested by the market, but what is known is that NVIDIA wants to rely on the replacement chip to turn around and achieve a sales counterattack, probably not that easy. After all, the performance of the substitutes is slightly behind, and competitors are prone to appear in the market. NVIDIA's technical performance advantage is not the strongest. Biden did not expect that the price of chips in the United States has plummeted and still cannot be sold. What caused it? The U.S. rules are just one reason. The U.S. does not restrict U.S. companies from completely banning shipments. Except for the most advanced chips, the rest of the chip products can still be shipped normally. But this part of the chip cannot be sold, and some American media said that it is because China does not buy it. Since the beginning of this year, it can be clearly seen that the domestic chip market demand has changed. Consumers do not have much idea about purchasing smartphones, and the replacement cycle has been greatly extended, and it will take several years to replace a new one.
coupled with reasons such as mobile phone innovation and consumer purchasing power, the sales of mobile phones are mediocre. Under the chain reaction, the hundreds of chip components equipped with smartphones can no longer be sold. For mobile phone chip manufacturers such as Qualcomm, the impact is very obvious. In addition, the decline in consumer demand for computer products has also caused PC chip giants such as NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel to face sales difficulties. What will be the result of the United States vigorously building cores? In addition to the decline in demand, Chinese manufacturers are also increasing their deployment of self-developed chips and through the independent production of mature chips to meet the domestic needs of smart cars, the Internet of Things, and artificial intelligence. Therefore, the chips of American companies are no longer the only source. The diversified choices of customers make American companies have to accept the reality that chips cannot be sold. It is worth mentioning that the United States has also set a long-term core-making goal and has drawn TSMC to build a factory in the United States when American chips cannot be sold. The United States will push TSMC to further build a 3 nanometers factory in the future, increasing the investment to 40 billion US dollars and will release an annual production capacity of 600,000 wafers in the future. In order to allow more production capacity to be concentrated in the United States, the other party also introduced a $52 billion chip subsidy bill, prompting Intel and Micron Technology to increase investment in the chip manufacturing industry. What will be the result of the United States making so much effort to build cores? I am afraid it will make it more difficult for American chips to ship. The United States does not have the advantages of the industrial chain. Forcibly manufacturing cores will only increase the cost of chips. With an investment scale of hundreds of billions of dollars, the chips produced may not be able to maintain a normal price order. At that time, consumers will definitely not be willing to accept expensive chips, and consumers will no longer want chips. The more manufacturers increase their production capacity, the more they will pile up production capacity. If things go on like this, American chips will either be converted to domestic sales, or they will seek cooperation in the consumer market again. It is impossible to switch to domestic sales. The United States does not have the demand potential of a huge chip consumer market and the best choice is to connect with the customer market. But in this way, the initiative will return to the hands of the consumer market. If the United States does not have a good relationship with the market now, it will be hard to say whether chips can be sold in the future. Chip sales should have been carried out in a free trade market but we have seen that in order to gain the right to speak in high-end chip sales, the United States does not allow American companies to cross the rules at will. Doing so will not do any good to the development of globalization and will only make American companies fall into the quagmire of increasing sales. What do you think about this? Welcome to leave a message below to share.